Are you sure, Plump? <laughs> Are you sure? Really? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> And you, I guess, I guess you weren't the only one who said as much. Very accent the same. Well, I'm sure he just wants to hear amusing accents. So, uh, drink every time you hear Grimace say something stupid in a silly accent, or just say something in a silly accent. Because it's not like you know he doesn't have enough drinking games he's made of me anyway, <laughs> especially regarding some ant. <laughs> but all right. Oh, and uh, I totally get it. The cigar ring. Especially in black and white, can definitely be hard to see. You just think it might be like a feature of the floor or whatever, could totally overlook it. It's an important item, though, which is why I grabbed it. I'll try to be grabbing important items in the series. Anyway, welcome back to Let's Get On With It Deja Vu 2, folks. Lost in Las Vegas. In the last episode, we of course kicked things off, and we left with me trying to figure out how to get my damn $5 chips from this table before a douchebag over there took them all. And... <laughs> <laughs> Grimace, way to go, good job. I, I, of course, figured out the how to properly use shift and the left mouse button after I ended the recording. I was like, well, let's see if what I do on my Windows computer works where I hold down shift and I select multiple things slowly because, you know, I obviously can't drag on this menu. And then after I select all of them, I can just... Drag over at once, and they all move. Herder! Takes a special... <laughs> I... Oh, shit, let's not close that. Uh, you know what I blame that on? I blame that on the alcohol. <laughs> fucking get, uh, Jamie Foxx and Jake Gyllenhaal and fucking... Ron Howard all up in this bitch. I blame it on the alcohol. Not my fault. So I got all my chips, and, uh, we're gonna go ahead and leave this place. I don't exactly remember what's further along this way. I presume it's just more blackjack tables, maybe some more slot machines. We're done gambling, though. I'm not going to uh, risk my luck anymore. I'm pretty sure I'm sure the house would like to get its money back. So let's kindly, or calmly, GTFO. Slot machines. I've been running cold all night, pal. Now's your chance. Doesn't like a game of blackjack. <laughs> He's totally white. What the fuck are you talking about? I wonder... I don't think there's a black guy in this game. Because I'm wondering, you know... Now I'm thinking back to like how many black and white games I've played over the course of my life, and I'm thinking... Black people... How easy are those to depict? <laughs> I don't think that's the proper question for a 1940s hard-boiled detective novel. Let's just move on. Alright, hello lady. Now you see, I can drag in the inventory. I can do that just fine. Let's give her the cat, uh, the chips. It is payday. And shift click on these and put these in my inventory. So what do we got here? We have ourselves, wow, a 20. And a fine picture of Jackson, $20. Oh, and I kind of need to give her this chip too. Take it. I want no more chips. That's a $5 bill right there. Because they were $5 chips. This bill is worth five dollars, so I went in with with ten dollars worth of chips, and I came out with forty-five dollars. Nice. I think that's a good transaction. All right, let's get out of here. Uh, I think this is the exit. There we go. That was right. You're standing outside a fancy brick building. It's a striped awning with the words "Lucky Dice Hotel and Casino" on it in big gold letters. And over here, we have ourselves a palm tree, which flanks one side of the building's entrance. Now, lots of different places to explore in this game. It is completely non-linear, except for its time limit. You could go wherever you want, and get yourself screwed in the process. We're not going to dilly-dally and explore too much. I don't exactly remember how much time I have. I mean, I got like a week, I know, but... How that translates as a game moves, I don't remember. It's been too long. I couldn't even remember how to pick up multiple chips, okay? I'm not trusting my memory at all at this point. So, uh, well, not too much. We're going to go ahead and move right here, and this takes us to the train station. The Las Vegas Station. The sign with large letters, it spells the Las Vegas Station. Sunlight reflects off the se of this segmented round window above, above the front entrance. 
Go ahead and double click on the doors and go in there. You're in the lobby of the Las Vegas train station. That's cool. Now there's four gates here, and then there's baggage claim, and then there's the two double doors that take us back outside. Where we want to go is the train state. Uh, we want to go to the baggage claim booth. We need a train to Chicago. This is the Las Vegas baggage claim booth where excitement never ends. Check your baggage here. Let's examine departures. Sign reads departures track city status. Ah, shit. Chicago's en route. Fuck. All right, we're gonna have to wait a little bit. The elderly attendant looks your way. You hear a voice yell, "All aboard!" in the distance. Examine departures. Chicago's still en route. Well, fuck. I'll just keep looking around. It's a sign that says, "Check your baggage here." You hear a whistle in the distance. Chicago is boarding. Oh shit! Was that gate seven? I clicked too fast. Gate 7. Let's go onto the train. One way fare to Chicago costs $20. He seems impatient. Well, let's pay the man. I'm pretty sure this is one of the 20s. So, thank you, sir. Woohoo! We're on a train for Chicago, folks. Let's take a look at what that says all the way off there in the distance. The sign reads, Not responsible for lost or stolen items. Management. Those bastards. You can see the station platform through the window. You hear a whistle in the distance. Whoop. You hear the conductor yell, All aboard! About three feet from your ear. What do we got going on here? It's a fellow passengerette. She looks like she ought to be in pictures. Well, what about you? What a nag. She's got the lungs of Madame Schumann Heinz. Oh, shit, I don't know that one. And the voice of nails across a chalkboard. That mouth is going a mile a minute. Hit lady. <laughs> nah, we're good. We're good. We, we left behind our career of, uh, of prize fighting. The guy nods and agrees with every word his wife and say, is saying. The train's doors are shut in preparation for departure. The train lets out a loud whistle. What a doll. She's got the most beautiful wavy hair. Boop, boop, ba doop. As you settle into the seat, the train slowly pulls away from the platform, gathers speed, and moves out into the world. The gentle rhythm of the train rocks you to sleep. You half wake from your slumber, look around the train, and fall back into a peaceful sleep. You can see the landscape moving there in the background. You arise well rested to see glimpses of the city as your journey nears its end. You wipe the sleep from your eyes and step off the train. Welcome to Chicago! No wonder so many muggings take place here. This part of the train station needs more light. Huh. It's a Chicago train station lobby. Smell the coal? Hear the trains? Yeah, we're done hearing trains. Let's go ahead and open up our wallet here. And... Woo, shut up. Now, we're going to take this quarter here, and we're going to give it to this man over here. Let's go ahead and look at him first. It's an old blind newsstand clerk. <laughs> He's blind. Well, nothing wrong with that. Equal opportunity employment, even in hard-boiled detective novels in the, set in the 1940s. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Let's go ahead and operate this quarter on this here old man. The blind man nods and said, Thanks. Please take a paper. I will. T-Y-V-M. That paper is pretty tiny. What do we have over here? It's a seeing eye dog. His tag says his name is Boris. Although he appears to be a pit bull chihuahua mix, he kind of reminds you of your old dog, dog Taco. He might have been just a pooch, but at least he didn't nag when you came home late. Oh man, I didn't know that would pop up. <laughs> Whenever that happened. Okay. So what's the paper we got here? You quickly glance at the headline. Gangland Bagman Murdered. The second headline, a smaller one, says... Foul play? You read the story. An as yet unrecognizable body, perhaps that of a well-known local mobster, is believed to have come to his end at the hands of a fellow gangster. In recent months, gang-related activity has increased in this city. Police are investigating any possible connections between the Siegel murder and this most recent slaying. The article notes the body now resides at the city morgue. Interesting. 
Alright, let's go ahead and get out of here. You are standing outside a large train station. There is a cab parked here. Well, how convenient. That's the only thing we can hop into. A cab, so... Hey. Let's take a look at the cab. It's a familiar yellow cab sitting in the street. There doesn't seem to be a passenger in the back. Is that so? Well, let's go ahead and get in it. You open the door and enter the cab. Why, it's none other than your old pal Gabby. How are you, Gabby, you ask him. Oh, uh, I don't know what kind of accent I want to do for Gabby. Gabby's a nice guy. But I can't really do a proper accent for him and his condition. Uh... You'll see what I'm talking about. Yes, thank you, he answers with a big smile. Yeah, you remember meeting Gabby for the first time years ago. You instantly recognized that he was almost totally deaf and could barely read lips, so you had to figure out other ways of directing him. Talking just didn't cut it. Through the years, you've helped him out, and in return, he's never charged you a cent. Quite a prince that Gabby is. How convenient that our good friend here, Gabby, whom we've helped for fucking ever, you know, help him get on his feet, help him operate a taxi, you know, how fitting that he, you know, convenient that he's right there in front of the Chicago train station waiting for us. And where the hell was he the first game? <laughs> That's all I gotta say. Where the hell was he in game number one? Could have used his ass. So, yeah, he's he's almost deaf, so his voice is obviously going to be affected because of that. Um, I think I'll just ignore his condition and, uh... Yeah. Where you want to go today, boss? <laughs> Where you want to? Where do you want to? <laughs> Give him the voice of Doctor Claw. Where do you want to go today, Ace Harding? <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? Just because I'm almost deaf doesn't mean I can't tell that you're laughing at me. I am Doctor Claw. I am saving up enough money to destroy Inspector Gadget. I'll get him next time. Yes, kitty, that's a good kitty. Good kitty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> we need to stop. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and open up the wallet here. So, the game pretty much tells you you can't just tell him where you want to go. You need to, ha you need to communicate with him in other ways. And the way you can do that is through pictures. So if you show him where you want to go, he'll take you there. For example, our driver's license here, which says that we live in... <laughs> Some of you guys pointed this out and, uh, in the comments for the first video. Are you sure you live there? Are you sure? Yes. Let's go ahead and show that to Gabby. Well, let's operate it on him, rather. Gabby, Gabby recognizes the address. Yes, he says with a grin. He drives you to the apartment entryway. Really? I couldn't give yeah, I couldn't give that voice to like a mob boss, you know, just like some mobster. I give that to Gabby. Sweet, innocent Gabby. <laughs> Here we are, Ace. <laughs> well, let's get out. You try the door, but it does not budge. Gabby says, Sorry, Ace. That door hasn't opened since the garbage truck hit me. Okay. You open the door and hop out of the cab. You're in front of a rundown apartment building. Home sweet home. Except for you. A tap on your shoulder you felt before comes again. Just a gentle reminder, pal. Your days is numbered. Thanks. Appreciate that, asshole. Let's go into the door. Ah, home. A dimly lit hall. The aroma of stale beer, popcorn, and rancid grease. This brings back wonderful memories of the fine lifestyle you live. Is that so? You recognize the well-worn brass key to your apartment. We have a few doors here. Your very own apartment door, 1A. Let's go ahead and operate the key on the door. The door is now unlocked. And let's go in. You're standing in a room that looks like it was turned inside out. The stale odor of cheap cigar smoke tells you the mess was caused by that two-legged tornado, Stogie Martin. That's great! That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Fantastic. Okay, so, got a bunch of different items in this room. I presume that's like an empty scotch or vodka bottle there. There we go, the cheap stuff. Buffalo Grove Malted Scotch. And, uh, some ransacked shit. First thing we want here is our flashlight. Let's go ahead and pick that up. Second thing we want to do here is open our overcoat. Hang on the wall and ooh, we got some goodies there. Hey, we got a 38 special, and we got a shiny quarter, and we have ourselves, I think that's a 10. Yep, it's only a saw bug, but then again, 10 bucks is 10 bucks. Let's go ahead and get that. And I tell you what, we're going to leave the quarters there. I might need to come back in the future. I might have another hangover. And I'll leave the gun there, too. You know, let's not get around a gun. Maybe it's evidence that could be used against me in a court of law. Who knows? I've already been in one situation where someone tried to frame me for some shit. Let's just leave it there. But instead, what we're going to do here is open this drawer, which <laughs> is obviously already open. What, what the hell? And we got some shit here. What I want from here, though, is not this plain cardboard box, or a safe deposit box key, or the tarnish key. I want my pin knife. My old pin knife. Let's go ahead and take that. But I figure, you know, what the hell? Let's go ahead and take this key. I don't think there's anything of value in my safety deposit box, but... Let's go ahead and check, and... Hey! It's a ring from one of the cheap cigars that Stogie Martin smokes. We've already got one. That's enough. What we got here? It's what used to be your couch before Stogie used it for target practice. Is that so? Ah, uh, home. Which one is mine? Uh, open you. Operate you on you. Operate you on you. Operate you on you. Damn it. You on you. That is my... Well, I guess these aren't safe deposit boxes so much as mail box. You know what? Screw it. This was terrible. Screw it. Forget it. We're done. Had a little experiment there. I don't need a safe deposit box key. Fuck it. I could stay there too just in case I get drunk another night. I, for whatever reason, thought that my mailbox was a safety deposit box. I'm still suffering from a hangover. That's my excuse. <laughs> Let's get out of here. And head to the taxi. Alright. You're sitting inside of Gabby's cab. You've been in it so many times that you feel like you own it. Open the wallet here. And show this little clipping that says Ace Clear's name. Because it mentions the address of Joe's Bar. Which is where we're going to go next. Joe's Bar, if you recall, was where we started off in the original Deja Vu. The setting has changed a bit. Uh, you'll see what I mean whenever we go there. First off, operate it on him. Gabby re recognizes the address. Yes, he says with a grin. He drives you to Joe's Bar. Joe's Bar's entrance. Gabby stops the car, blah, blah, blah. Here we are, Ace. Okay, you open the door and hop out of the cab. Why, it's your favorite haunt, Joe's Bar. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and... Save as just in case. Um, might load the game. I'm curious. Due to alligator scares in the past few years, the Board of Health has sealed this entrance to the sewer system. Damn it! All right, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Whatever. Let's go ahead and we have a whole lot of locations we can mess around with here. But what we want to do? Let's go back here to the alleyway. Now, you may recall in the first game, if you tried to reach the fire escape, you weren't able to do so. But in this game, you can. You're on a rather shaky fire escape. Now, let's take a look here. It's a bunch of boards nailed together to seal off the window. One board is loose. Um, tell you what. What if we say... Operate the boards. You knock a board off, uncovering a hole big enough for you to squeeze through. Nice. Let's go through. You're in an office. In fact, it's the same office in which you had first discovered Joey Siegel's body. Okay. Take a look around. 
on the desktop was a pool of dried blood. You remember finding Joey Siegel draped across it with three slugs in him. Siegel was your bookie, and you were a lousy gambler. You might have felt sorry for him when he was iced, except that he was a cruel and heartless man, and you did owe him a lot of money. So it was just super convenient for us that he died, yes. The stainless steel, steel wall safe with a combination lock. I believe we opened that in the first game, and uh, we've got a telephone here. It's an old-fashioned telephone, perhaps for decoration only. This is going to be amusing. We're going to open the telephone, folks. Yes. And watch this. It's a key. My god. Now we could go exploring around in here, but you guys have already seen how this entire Joe's Bar building looked in the first one. And we don't need the black and white rendition, okay? Let's go ahead and just get out. And head back down. Now we're going to go back here. Which should take us further down the alley. What's that say? I said, what's that say? Oh, fine. You know what? Fuck you. I don't want to... I didn't want to do it. Oh, sh mother fuck. <laughs> Fucking me, scared me. I wasn't expecting that. No one expects us, old ladies! Goddamn kids, get off my lawn! <laughs> I can't believe she scared me! Oh, man. That's bad. That's bad. There's not even any sound or music. How did you scare me, lady? Suddenly, a haggard old woman seems to appear out of nowhere and pummels you with her purse for no apparent reason. She then runs off screaming, SAVE THE FURNITURE! <laughs> you know what? We're ending the video here. Next time on Let's Get On With the Deja Vu 2, let's, uh, let's do what I was actually going to do in this back alley. It was not... It was not that. <laughs>